This video contains violent content and sexual themes. Viewer discretion advised. <laughs> Mamma mia! It seems like every day, someone is trying to trick someone else into believing something that simply is not true. Cryptic messages, extra weapons, secret levels, and unlockable characters are all programmed into the source code for the sake of discovery. Even so, some gamers take their obsession of hidden content to the extreme, falling victim of the wildest fabrications spread across the internet and media. Video game related media have been far from oblivious to the trend. So here are the top 55 hoaxes in games. Castle at the Peak in Battlezone The oldest and quite possibly first existence of these gaming hoaxes dates back to the 1980s. It was reported that in Atari's Battlezone, you could actually drive to the edge of the zone and climb up into the mountains and to the peak of the volcano. Apparently at this peak, there was a castle which could be explored if only you were able to drive far enough. Sadly, such an exploration was never possible. It was far beyond the capabilities of the era. This set of rumors was prevalent enough that arcade owners were complaining about people hogging the Battlezone machines without actually playing the game. As such, developers ended up adding a small bit of code in later variants that would make a missile instantly home in and kill a player if they failed to kill anything within a reasonable amount of time. The Triple Ship, Galaga. The most casual of Galaga fans knew the trick of letting the alien swoop down and allow it to steal away one of your fighters. You then use your next ship in reserve to attack that same alien, rescuing your captured craft and, watch triumphantly, join together with your active fighter for double firepower. However, rumors started spreading of a triple ship. Sadly, this was untrue. The triple ship couldn't be done in the original. The double shot version was the best you could get. The developers were so impressed with the rumor that in Galaga 88, if you freed a double ship from Galaxian forces, you earned a triple ship. Jumping over the flagpole in Super Mario Bros. Many people are convinced that something great will happen if you jump over a flagpole in Super Mario Bros. and that maybe it will lead to a super secret level. Well, this is possible to do in World 3-3 by using the scale lift at the end, but however there's nothing past the flagpole except featureless, infinitely repeating landscapes. And once you're over the other side though, there's no way to get back, so it's kind of a waste of time. The Ninth World of Super Mario Bros. 3 Back in the day, Super Mario Bros. 3 had a very popular rumor of a Ninth World hidden in the game, despite the fact that the actual Ninth World is the Warp Zone. This was likely fueled by the fact that the boxes of Super Mario Bros. 3 had screenshots of a level that didn't appear in the finished game. Shooting the Dog and Duck Hunt there were many theories back in the day, and one that gamers believed was that there were ways to shoot the dog in Duck Hunt. One was that you had to get to stage 99 to do it, but no matter what the rumor, there was no way. Unless you played the original arcade version, or downloaded hacked versions of the game. Getting inside Peach's Castle in Super Mario Kart 64. Since Peach's Castle was seen in Super Mario Kart 64 and Royal Raceway of Star Cup, many people believe that somehow the castle held some sort of shortcut or a secret. People believe that the doors could be opened somehow with lightning shells or with a star, but there was no way sadly. The castle was simply a backdrop to the award ceremony. And that's about it. The Motorcycle Level in Streets of Rage 3 
Streets of Rage 3 had a review in Game Informer mag when it came out with pictures and screenshots of the Japanese version called Bare Knuckle 3. It showed characters riding motorcycles. When the American version of Streets of Rage was released, gamers found no motorcycle level at all in the game. So, rumors started spreading that there was some sort of secret stage or mini-boss that they had to beat in order to unlock the motorcycle bonus stage. The true fact was, though, that the US version had far less data on it than the Japanese version did, so several aspects and levels from the game were completely removed. Nitrous Oxide and Crash Course Team Racing! Brass Team Racing held rumors that Nitrous Oxide was a secret playable character if you beat certain requirements. This was a persistent rumor for a good while since the game's release, and it didn't help that every other single boss character was unlockable. And there was actually another super secret character, Penta Penguin, who could only be unlocked through cheats. You'll get a trophy for beating all of his easier, albeit, staff ghosts. So it stands to reason that you'll get nitrous for beating all of the extremely difficult freaking ghost. Instead, you just get a shortcut to the scrapbook in the main menu. How lovely. The Severed Leg in Prototype. Even before the game's release, the developers stated that you could unlock a new character and secret mission if you found a hidden severed leg. A few weeks after the game's release, a member of the game's FAQ's community found the leg and was disappointed to find that nothing happens. The developers even acknowledged that people have found the severed leg, but they had refused to give further information. Rumors now focus on things such as all the crazy things you have to do to get the leg to work, and some believe that there's another leg out there that you must find in order to unlock the secret character. The Tails Doll Curse from Sonic R. In the game Sonic R, which was a Sonic racing game for the Sega Saturn, you could unlock a character named Tails Doll. In the game mode called Tag, the myth spread that if you chose the Tails Doll, played Tag, and won, the real Tails Doll would kill or otherwise harm you that night. The idea of something like this happening is extremely unlikely, and has been proven many times on walkthroughs on YouTube. This so-called Tails Doll Video Hauntings are very cleverly edited, and one was even made by Tats himself in the Top 20 Gaming Creepypastas. Tarzan, L.A. Noyer, or Noir, however you want to pronounce it. There was a post made on a Rockstar forum which claimed to have made an interesting discovery. Similar to GTA Ratman, Tarzan wanders around the underground tunnels of old LA. You could apparently hear his animal-like scream and investigate a shrunken head he put behind you. This hoax was pretty compelling because it had a half-decent video attached to it, but the video had one major flaw. Upon further inspection, it is quite obvious that the person took a Tarzan sound clip and posted it onto the background of the normal audio. Proof? If you download the video and post it into any standard editing software, you can see two audio tracks. One of the normal game audio, and one of the Tarzan screen. There was once a two hour livestream of looking for Tarzan, with no luck. As for the shrunken head, well, that's just a lie. Even though this was one of the more obvious hoaxes, for a first myth, it was pretty good. The Laser Suit in Super Mario World The Laser Suit was reported as a special item on a lone island from a secret exit from the ghost house of Donut Plains. The Laser Suit claimed to be a rare item and was very overpowered. When players finished a level called Top Secret, a pathway would lead to a level on a lone island titled Question Mark. A question box congratulates the player from the Nintendo team, and the item can be found on a silver and gold platform. This hoax was further backed by several YouTube videos uploaded in 2007, which looked very legitimate at the time. The uploader never responded to comments, 
These days, consensus believe that it's a well-made hack using lunar magic. But the video still fools the uninitiated. Extra Levels in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 there were a few rumors about bizarre or secret levels in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and at the time, presumably these levels took on mythic proportions. It turns out that the levels existed, but they were basically leftovers from development phase. These levels existed at a certain point, hence the music from them and the screenshots were real, but later in development they were axed due to lack of memory or simply not enough time to finish. Play as Mario in Luigi's Mansion The rumor that Mario is a unlockable character in Luigi's Mansion is completely ridiculous because the game itself is called Luigi's Mansion, not Mario's Mansion, and while many players have heard no mention of star collecting in specific areas, even what Mario is capable of, and why should he even bother in the first place? Plenty of curious players have taken to message boards asking how to find Mario only to express disappointment when they're told Luigi is all they have to work with. Render Man, Blockland. The Render Man was an entity within the video game Blockland. He originally started out as a mythical creature who would supposedly render himself into user's screenshots and sometimes videos. The Render Man was heavily inspired by Slender Man, who was a mythical creature which resembled a human wearing a suit and stretched his limbs extremely far. The Render Man's abilities were also inspired by Slender Man's, such as superportation and digital distortion. He was confirmed as a false hoax, much like Herobrine from Minecraft. As the myth spread, numerous add-ons were created to add Render Man into the game and, for a Halloween update, Users would sometimes be able to catch a glimpse of Render Man's face in the sky. Since the release of the Render Man mod by Christbot 6, many videos will feature Render Man in them. The Nude Code from Better Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. In one of many April Fool's issues of Electronic Gaming Monthly, the promise of a code to unlock all the naked girls you could ogle proved to cause quite an outrage among readers. For a game like Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball created for the sole purpose of displaying shameless sexuality and jiggle physics, this was perfect fodder for all the horny teens to finally see all the girls in all their glory. This hoax not only upset a lot of people, but apparently EGM received tons of angry letters in response. It wasn't until much later that hackers created a patch that could be applied to copies of versions of the game. This enabled the ability to choose a nude skin when selecting a swimsuit. The Cow Level in Diablo in the original Diablo, there appeared to be a cow that served no real purpose in the game. Naturally, like all mundane, mysterious objects in games, a rumor was started that this cow was apparently a part of a portal to a secret cow level when clicked on the right number of time. Well, Blizzard found out about this legend, and they thought it was so entertaining that they decided to actually include the cow level in Diablo 2. It serves mostly as a paradise for people who want to level up quickly. Bikini Samus in Super Metroid There is a rumor that you can play as bikini-clad Samus in Super Metroid, which persisted even after Nintendo Power issued a post-interview statement just near the end of the SNES days that it was categorically untrue. These desires to play as Suitless Samus in Super Metroid has led to various fan hacks, and a similar myth is associated with Metroid Prime, where they have a scantily clad mode that can supposedly be unlocked by a special button sequence similar to the Konami Code. Brutus in Animal Crossing 
Brutus was said to be a male villager, taking a similar appearance to that of Booker, a bulldog police officer, except purple. Brutus was reported as an evil NPC that will cut down your trees, leave trash in your town, and other such hateful deeds. Brutus would sometimes spawn in your house and fill it full of nothing but fish. That would crash the game because of the sheer amount of memory being used up. At the time the game came out, the game was young and loaded with content, making the myths seem quite believable. Years later, when Animal Crossing New Leaf and Animal Crossing Let's Go to the City were created, Nintendo actually included Brutus. But they changed his color to brown instead of purple, and gave the character an angry expression. Brutus in these versions do not perform any malevolent activities, however. Donkey Kong in Super Punch-Out! In the arcade versions of Super Punch-Out, rumors abounded that if you built up a string of repeated victories over the final champion, you would be challenged by audience member Donkey Kong. In truth, the game ended no matter what you did. Donkey Kong was merely an easter egg appearing in the background with other Nintendo characters. Nintendo actually responded to the positive reception and included Donkey Kong as a secret opponent in Wii Punch-Out! Simon Belmont in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 The Arcade Game in Electronic Gaming Monthly's 21st issue, Simon Belmont, the hero of Castlevania, was a secret playable character in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 The Arcade Game. You did this by resetting the game 5 times and pressing a certain button combination on controller 1 and 2 and a turtle icon would be replaced with Simon. He was reported as being a lot stronger and had more health than the turtles. Unfortunately, this was proven a hoax as it just was an April Fool's joke from Electronic Gaming Monthly. The Cloaking Device in Star Control 2 Star Control 2 had an extremely persistent myth of a cloaking device for the precursor ship. The Star Control 2 box showed a screenshot of an earlier version of the game in which a cloaking device could be seen in the device's menu. This led to rumors on the Star Control boards believing the device to be contained somewhere in the game. One of the regulars on the board eventually claimed to have found it, and went as far as to mock up some screenshots to prove it. Eventually, after six years, the lead programmer of Star Control replied and stated that there is no cloaking device for the precursor ship because they couldn't find out a way, given the limitations of two players fighting on the same screen, to make it more interesting. The Ambulance Ending in Silent Hill a rumor was claimed that the first Silent Hill game featured an ambulance ending, in which Harry rampaged through the town in an ambulance. Some user had posted on a forum saying that they had got glucose and distilled water from the school chemistry storeroom. These were among the ingredients needed to make a bomb. They then claimed to blew open the barrier to the hospital. There would be a gas can containing oil, which if used on the ambulance, would unlock the fifth secret ending, in which Harry escaped Silent Hill. Unfortunately, what gamers didn't know is that video and screenshots of the ambulance ending were in fact cutscenes from two different Japanese games, one called Zombies vs. Ambulances and the other Emergency Call Ambulance. The Super Secret Car of LEGO Racers There was a rumor where if you named your character Truck Driver, and beat Rocket Racer with it, you could get some sort of super secret hidden car. It started to spread all over the internet, until it was eventually confirmed false through several debunkings. Modding has further shown that there are no indicators of this cheat ever even existing to begin with. It was never planned at any point in time, and it was merely a myth. Sparky the Dog and Five Nights at Freddy's Sparky the Dog was a fan-made animatronic that was stated to appear on the backstage camera. He was created by Tumblr users Cody Bear and Nguyen. He was described as a dog-like animatronic with a missing arm. Some claimed he was non-violent and would not attack the player, only occasionally appearing in the doorway to the backstage. Players would report seeing him appear during their games, and screenshots of him were shown on forums. Unfortunately, he was completely fan-made, and is not in the game, and no files from exist. 
The only image of him is a Photoshop image released by his creator, whom the creator also claims is fake. Barking Lasers Fallout 3 The Fallout 3 Barking Lasers hoax spread net wide through fan sites and wikia. The origin was a two frame animated gif which showed dog meat shooting lasers from his mouth, and this encouraged fans to spend hours of time and go to great lengths to include dog meat in an attempt to get him to use the laser rifle. The Famous in Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty The Famous was rumored to be a hidden gun in the tanker chapter. At one point, the Famous was included in Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Early trailers show Snake firing a Famous aboard the tanker USS Discovery. It's also seen in the final version during a cutscene when Iroquois Pliskin is talking to Raiden about the tanker incident, where it is being used by Snake to shoot an enemy soldier while he is distracted by falling fruit. The scene in question was likewise based on the gameplay sequence where the player had to escape from the tanker. While the gun is featured in the demo, it was cut in the final release due to being received poorly by the fanbase. Herobrine in Minecraft Minecraft has endured one of the fastest growing gaming communities ever, with countless public servers and game modifications keeping players busy for years to come, or at least several months. With such an expansive community, however, chances are good that people are going to want their own 15 minutes of fame. The legend of Herobrine started back in 2010, when Minecraft was still in alpha, and a user named Creepypasta posted a disturbing screenshot and accompanying story on Minecraft forums. The post claimed that a character would appear during gameplay, which resembled the default player model but with white eyes. One thing led to another, and it suggested that this character was actually a ghost of Minecraft creator Notch's deceased brother, Herobrine. This has since been proven false by Mojang, though Notch claims he may add the character in a future update. The Golden Desert Eagle in Modern Warfare 2 now, what we're talking about here is the Golden Desert Eagle from Modern Warfare 2, not Call of Duty 4 or Modern Warfare 3. The Golden Desert Eagle did not exist in this version of the game, and was supposedly a giant rumor flying around the forums and gaming boards. The Golden Desert Eagle was available in Call of Duty 4, but was not seen in the sequel, leading many people speculating it was a hidden easter egg in the game. There were many different ways to unlock the so-called gun. Some required nearly hours of determined gaming such as completing every challenge in the game, getting a level 55, earning every title, getting a certain number of kills with the standard Desert Eagle, and getting every emblem. Doing so will reward the player with the spinning 10th prestige icon as well as the Golden Desert Eagle. However, all of this was proven to be a complete hoax as the gun was just a standard Desert Eagle, but the color was hacked to look gold. The guns were seen online by many players, but these players had hacked and modified the game. The Yellow Banshee in Halo Combat Evolved The Yellow Banshee is an example of gossip kicked into overdrive. One post resulted in a wave of internet generation. A user had claimed to have witnessed and used the Yellow Banshee in the last level with in-proof screenshots. Legend expanded to level walkthroughs and hints on how to obtain one. Some fans even made fake screenshots of the Yellow Banshee to further trick the gullible. Still, the only reference to any vehicle that is golden or yellow was the billboard that was used in Halo 2 with the Golden Warthog hoax. The yellow banshee was claimed to be a hoax and was just recolored yellow through gaming modifiers. Bungie were so impressed with the response to the yellow banshee that they added a heretic banshee and yellow civilian warthog to Halo 2 Anniversary Collection. Scarlet in Mortal Kombat 2 In the arcade version of Mortal Kombat 2, a glitch would occasionally occur that would cause Kitana to morph into a red female ninja who was nicknamed Scarlet. This rumor spread like wildfire when Electronic Gaming Monthly published so-called actual images of this glitch as an April Fool's joke. However, some players still believed that there was another secret character. According to NetherRealm Studios, Scarlet's appearance in Mortal Kombat 2 was a programming glitch. Mortal Kombat 2 lead programmer Ed Boon 
publicly contradicted this, calling it simply not true. In a later interview, he expanded on this remark, saying, There was never a glitch that turned Katana red. That was just an urban legend like Animalities and Ermac. This glitch could, however, be the result of physical damage to the hardware of the arcade cabinet, leaving the validity of the glitch still up to debate. Due to the rumors surrounding the glitch, NetherRealm Studios did eventually include Scarlet as an official character in the 2011 version of Mortal Kombat. The Megalodon in Grand Theft Auto V. The Megalodon is a fairly new myth that was started by a user named StickWars99. The myth lends its origin to the Battlefield 4 Megalodon Easter egg. In the waters of Grand Theft Auto V, players have reported seeing a huge shark that can swim very fast. When it's approached, the creature will swim very quickly away from the player. No one has been attacked by this giant shark, but reports say it's carnivorous. It has been seen at the north of the map near the waters of Mount Chiliad. One possible explanation could be the in-game rendering time while underwater. On most occasions, textures on surfaces take several seconds to render in, making larger rock formations appear like a moving creature underwater. Like all other wildlife, sharks are currently not present in Grand Theft Auto Online. To this day, many people have recorded themselves traversing the waters of GTA V looking for the Megalodon. The Purple Yoshi in Yoshi's Story the Purple Yoshi was supposedly a rumored ninth Yoshi color found in Yoshi's story. Allegedly, you unlocked it by collecting every single coin from every single level, from the ones buried in the ground to the ones only found by using a super happy fruit. Some unofficial hint manuals even printed the rumor. Sadly, however, the game developers only stated that the only two hidden Yoshi colors were white and black. The developers did state that the game did originally contain a purple Yoshi and even a brown Yoshi during the beta phase, but were removed for some unknown reason, whether due to similarities or time management. The Alaris Extension Thief The Dark Project In Thief The Dark Project, there's an underground graveyard level called The Bone Hall. You have a rough map of the place, which highlights the existence of an area called the Alaris Extension, which players tried for years to find. Unfortunately, the extension is sealed off, and the area is not accessible, even with hacks. The idea was that this area was planned, but the developers removed it for unknown reasons. However, it didn't stop Thief players spreading the hopes to newcomers that within this non-existent area is a BOW upgrade. It often took the gullible hours, if not days, to realise they've been pranked. Tip the Iceberg in Club Penguin. The Iceberg is a secret room that can be accessed from the map, Jetpack Adventure, and the EPF spy phone. Supposedly, if you were to arm yourself with only a hard hat and nothing more, then go to the iceberg in Club Penguin, you'd be able to tip the entire iceberg by drilling at the most northwesterly point. At times, hundreds of players would congregate at this place and drill into the ice to see if the iceberg would tip. There have been many rumors of what is to happen once it is tipped. Many say you get a secret catalog of ultra rare items. Some say you get a heap of coins. A lot of other people say it just spins around and nothing else happens. Many people believe that it's possible to tip the iceberg, although in reality, such an event cannot occur. Since the room's SWF file doesn't contain any function for doing so. The Golden Warthog of Halo 2 There's been many rumors of the Golden Warthog in Halo 2. Backing this up was a billboard on Headlong showing a variation of the standard Warthog, except it was golden. Rumors of a hidden Warthog began to circulate the internet about a year after the commercial release of Halo 2. There was a great deal of contention over the vehicle, with many people claiming that it was actually a hoax. There were many different theories on how to obtain them and even backup videos to support them. However, these videos were proven fake and often resulted in the uploader who had modded the game. In reality, 
The Golden Warthog in the billboard was actually a regular Warthog, which had been altered by an in-game lighting glitch, making the vehicle look gold in color. The 10th class of Team Fortress 2. This image is a screen grab from the Left 4 Dead game, featuring a cereal box called Choco Bites. On the back it details an action figure deep inside, incidentally one of the classes of Team Fortress 2. The strange part is there are only 9 classes in Team Fortress 2, so why does the box say there are 10 action figures? Rumors began spreading that Valve was hinting the upcoming addition of a 10th class to their game. Other gamers started discussing the 10th class as a civilian, which was an unused character class. Apparently they had no firearms and only had an umbrella as a melee weapon. To add to the mystery, there was a map called Even Harvest, which even had a tombstone on it, saying 10th class. Still to this day, many gamers are hoping for a 10th class, while others suggest leaving the game as it is. Many also believe that the 10th class will be the guard dog, a dog with weaponry. This was further backed by screenshots and a detailed analysis on what the class could do. Obviously, the class was way too overpowered, and it was actually a fan-made art poster designed by Pyranodon. Many people to this day still believe it to be an upcoming update to the game. Whether Valve would indeed add this model to the game or not is up to them. The Ashbringer in World of Warcraft. The developers left just enough to make people believe they could actually get this legendary sword. It was supposed to appear in the original game, but it was then pushed back to the Burning Crusade, and then pushed back even further to Wrath of the Lich King. Blizzard released a four-issue miniseries that deals with the Ashbringer, giving it backstory unrelated to the other hints that were given. This being said, there are some less than clear hints that at one time, Blizzard had begun laying the quest line for Ashbringer. This quest had originally had something to do with the legendary Warcraft fisherman Nat Pagel, and the bits of his guides on fishing that may or may not have actually been a part of some secret message to reveal the Ashbringer's location. Blizzard was reportedly so impressed with the detective work that players did that they added in a legendary dagger called the Duskbringer. The Ashbringer rumors have also been fueled by the many strange things that happened in the pre-Burning Crusade when you carried around the corrupted Ashbringer, and by Blizzard's habit of adding and removing and messing with the very hard to find. The Werewolf in Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare. Rumors spread around of werewolves being in the Tall Trees area. It was possible, we thought, since Rockstar put many unique and interesting easter eggs like mythological horses of the apocalypse, a unicorn, a sasquatch, and even a chupacabra. However, there's been no legitimate evidence of a werewolf and Rockstar denies any such creature existing within the game code. However, many people still believe that it's real and are trying to track down the myth as we speak to prove people that it has some sort of existence. Ratman in Grand Theft Auto 4 Ratman is a myth based in Grand Theft Auto 4. Where the myth started remains a mystery. Supposedly, there are claims that a creature resembling a rat or half-man that's been seen in the subway or sewers, hinted by the Liberty Tree in an in-game website. Several people have claimed spotting the Ratman with in-game screenshots, claiming it runs fast and is typically seen in the subway or sewers. Several expeditions seen on YouTube have explored the subway with strange noises, but no actual results or proof of the Ratman. To this day, it is unclear whether Ratman was placed in the game as an easter egg, or whether it is all just an elaborate hoax. However, games are still trying to seek out this creature, and who knows, it's a possibility it may appear in the next Grand Theft Auto installment. The Ice Key in Banjo-Kazooie When players beat Grunty and gathered all the jiggies in the game, Mumbo would reveal to the player in an in-game cutscene secret locations of previously visited levels. In the video, it shows Banjo and Kazooie entering these formerly inaccessible location and finding mysterious treasures inside. 
eggs and a giant mysterious ice key. The game never told you how to access them, but Mumbo claimed they will be used in the next game. When you went back and played those levels after you beat the game, all the locations were still inaccessible. The ice key, however, could be seen, but there was no way to access it. Originally, the key and eggs were to be used for the second game cartridge, Banjo-Tooie, in which players had to slot their Banjo-Tooie cartridge into their console within a certain time limit. After players had witnessed the cutscenes, thousands of myths surrounding the eggs started to appear, such as standing around areas for a minute, shooting eggs at parts of the wall, or even using a combination of moves. Cheats, however, allowed you to finally grab the key, which Kazooie advises you to save for later. Be it a Game Shark code or entering this fabled cheat code on the sandcastle floor of Treasure Trove Cove. The two ports of the original Banjo Kazooie games for Xbox Live Arcade have integrated stop and swap into the games after all these years. Banjo Kazooie will unlock extra vehicle parts and nuts and bolts, while Banjo Tooie will unlock extra vehicles for nuts and bolts as well. Provided that you've downloaded the LOG's Lost Challenges expansion pack. Waluigi in Super Mario 64 DS Released on November 21, 2004, Super Mario 64 DS was a remake of the popular game for the Nintendo 64, Super Mario 64. Like in the first game where you could only play as Mario, the remake lets you play as Yoshi, Luigi and Wario. After release, rumors began to circulate that Waluigi was a secret playable character. Similar to the rumors that Luigi was a secret playable character in the original Super Mario 64 game. The rumors were started by a DeviantArt post titled, Waluigi in Super Mario 64 DS. The post and the rumor soon spread across the internet and is even said to have appeared in an issue of Nintendo Power. The post claimed that Waluigi could be unlocked by finding all the stars in the game and being the, quote, fastest foot racer in the land where after a secret switch would appear. After the player would have activated the switch, a door would appear that would lead the player into a boss battle with the Rabbit King. After this, the player would have unlocked Waluigi. The post has since become known as Purple Prizes. A YouTuber presented solid evidence for Waluigi not appearing in the game's code, not being seen in any of the Super Mario 64 DS beta videos, and that it was impossible for a secret character to be hidden for nine years. Preventing Deaths in Final Fantasy VII For many players, it was the first time a video game had made them feel something deeply emotional. To this day, very few cutscenes have affected players the way Eris' death did. According to many internet rumors circulating in the late 90s, it was possible to keep her alive through a series of convoluted and mundane actions in the game. Anything from finding hidden items to doing quests for characters that simply didn't exist. Unfortunately, all of them were fake, but that hasn't stopped some internet personas from making their claim to fame by suggesting that they have the answer. The fact is, Eris needs to die in order for the rest of Final Fantasy VII's story to make sense, and any claim that she's able to be saved is simply false. Akuma in Resident Evil 2 Back in 1998, Electronic Gaming Monthly allegedly printed an issue claiming that Street Fighter's Akuma could be unlocked as a playable character in Resident Evil 2. Gamers are told that they'd be able to unlock Akuma if they managed to complete Resident Evil 2 six times through on both scenarios and get A ratings on all the missions using only a handgun and knife. They would then have to simply start a seventh game and type Akuma into the computer screen. One of Street Fighter's finest was said to then burst out of a cryo tank and could then be used as a playable character from there on out. The fictional character edition, Akuma, didn't need guns and instead could shoot fireballs at the evil zombie hordes. He was apparently able to open any door without the need of a key. This report was yet another one of the magazine's infamous April Fool's tomfoolery. The Nude Code in Tomb Raider 
The famed Lara Croft nude code has been kicking around since 1996. Message board users would create elaborate stories of hidden levels and developer cheat codes, sending gullible players into a flurry of wasted hours and unsatisfied regions. Just when the fire would die down, another theory would pop up and players would be back trying to unravel its secrets. This is one of the first cases of influencing gamers in their perception of cheat codes and hidden content in video games, and it became a gaming phenomenon. Bigfoot, Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas. The urban legend that spread like wildfire was that the mythological Bigfoot could be found within the game. Images had even surfaced online of the beast roaming the in-game forests. The rumor was that if players wandered through Mount Chiliad or Baco Beyond at night, they'd have a small chance of running into the beast. GTA players preambulated their way around the woods in hopes of crossing paths with the legendary monster, but after countless failed attempts, the easter egg was written off as an elaborate hoax. Even Rockstar co-founder Terry Donovan debunked the prank in an interview, claiming that there is no Bigfoot just like in real life. However, Bigfoot was planned for the game, but later removed for unknown reasons. Rockstar did, however, add Bigfoot to GTA V as a side mission. The Pendant from Dark Souls The game's director Hidetaka Miyazaki encouraged players that they should choose either the Pendant or Nothing as a starting gift. His suggestion set in motion all kinds of speculation on the Pendant's true usage, and that the Pendant perhaps had some kind of special use. For months, fans tried to find a hidden purpose for this item, trying everything, dropping it in front of bosses, locations, characters, and bonfires, or perhaps seeing if it unlocked some kind of special dialogue or interactions with the game's covenants. Hidetaka later revealed that he was just playing a prank, that the pendant served absolutely no purpose at all. Sonic and Tails in Super Smash Bros. Melee The trick was to defeat 20 or more wireframe opponents in Crucial Melee and a duel would be yours. Well, diehard players tried it, and one Japanese player KO'd 565 wireframes with a Pikachu, and one Danish guy allegedly killed 10,000 wireframes with Samus disproving the rumor in the most thorough way possible. Sonic was available in the next Smash Bros installment, but unfortunately Tails was nowhere to be found. This rumor possibly could stem from the fact that Sonic was originally going to be in Super Smash Bros. Melee, however they ran out of time to implement him. Same thing with Solid Snake. The 17th Colossus, Shadow of the Colossus There were several myths surrounding the popular game, Shadow of the Colossus, but in particular, the most famous was the 17th Colossus. As gamers know, there had been a rumor floating around that there was a hidden colossus that you could access after beating the 16th in the game. The methods to unlock the mighty foe are different, however, they all revolve around beating the game four times. Normal, Hard, Time Trial, and Time Trial Hard. Once you've done this, your grip will be strong enough to allow you to climb the tower and make your way to the secret garden, where the rumored colossus will come out of a wall. Unfortunately, this is untrue. While it's true that the developers had intended for there to be a grand total of 48 colossi in the game, as evidenced by the official art book, which had unused designs. Gamers tested this myth time in utilizing aggro jumps to access areas with poor collision detection, as well as other exploits via emulators. Some gamers even obtained early preview discs in search of any hint that such a colossus truly existed. Ermac in Mortal Kombat According to Electronic Gaming Monthly, there was a hidden fourth ninja in the game named Ermac. Players had already noticed there was a hidden green ninja named Reptile, who would appear randomly, 
so seeing Ermac appear made gamers believe that an extra character was hidden. If you could fight through the game as Scorpion with a double flawless fatality victory against every character, including the real hidden character of Reptile, you would face the Red Ninja Ermac. Unfortunately, Ermac is a name short for Error Macros, which only appeared on a debug menu, and the red costume shown when the actors performed their moves. The costumes were usually colored red to avoid clashing with the green screen that the actors would be in front of. The original sprites were red, with blue, yellow, and green added on as a color palette to differentiate between the characters. Ermac didn't exist in the original Mortal Kombat, but the game's creators were so impressed with the response to the character that he appeared in later games of the series, and even had a role in the second Mortal Kombat movie, Annihilation. Shenlong in Street Fighter 2 The rumor originated in the Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine, as an April Fool's joke gone mad. Ryu's victory quote was, You must defeat Shen Long to stand a chance. The quote was referred not to an alternate character, but was simply a mistranslation of Shuryuken. However, that didn't stop EGM from creating a fake columnist with fake tips on how to unlock Shen Long. Ostensibly, one would have to suffer no damage throughout the entire game and spend 10 consecutive matches with M. Bison without touching him or taking any damage. After the timer ran out, on the 10th match, the uber-powerful Shenlong was supposed to appear and kick Bison off-screen, at which point you would fight him, and evidently unlock him as a playable character. The 24th Cheat of GoldenEye 64 The 24th Cheat is supposedly an extra cheat that was missing from the standard 23 cheats available for GoldenEye 64. Because of the format of the cheats, it looks like there's one missing. Even if no one had told you of the rumors of what the 24th cheat was, you would assume that you were still one away from completing the whole list. There was a theory on what the 24th cheat was, and that was All Bonds Mode. All Bonds Mode would allow you to play as all the previous incarnations of James Bond in multiplayer. And this was backed up with an early screenshot that actually showed Sean Connery as Bond. And to add fuel to the fire, Electronic Gaming Monthly Magazine, surprise surprise, made it their April Fool's rumor in 1998. Now, there was some minor truth in that the game did have the data for the other actors present, but it had been removed over not being able to secure the necessary licensing rights. The Lone Island an unaccessible island in the very first level also provided a lot of rumor fuel, from being the result of leftover testing artifacts to housing secret items of unimaginable power. It was later revealed that it was indeed meant to be an integral part of the first mission, but abandoned to allow for space in the hardware for local multiplayer and for being uninteresting. And what had been developed at that point was simply left in. The Hidden Gun Other rumors talked about a secret weapon called the Scorpion or Spider, believing it to be the weapon shown on the back of the box. In fact, what's shown on the box is the Beta KF-7 Soviet, while Scorpion and Spider are both beta names for the club. Part of the confusion is that the manual refers to the club as the Spider, as the name Glob was later introduced much later during the development period. Oromov's briefcase. Oromov's briefcase and key were the subject of some speculation often held to be a part of some method to access above and or the island on dam. They were actually a part of an abandoned level idea that would have taken place between Silo and Frigid. Luigi in Super Mario 64 The hoax was based around a plaque on a star statue in one of the castle's courtyards. The plaque has a cryptic message engraved on it, stating, L is real, 2041. This was where the rumor began, and it was said that Luigi could be obtained by gathering every single coin in Super Mario 64, of which there was allegedly 2041. After gathering this massive heap of coins, players were instructed to return to the statue where Luigi was said to then emerge as a playable character. Gathering every single coin in 64 and returning to the statue didn't do anything, and Luigi was nowhere to be found. 
Early beta screenshots printed in Nintendo Power and recent interviews have revealed that Luigi was intended for the game, but later removed. It's safe to say Luigi doesn't appear in this version. Mew Truck and Pokemon This urban legend was slaved over for ages by many Pokemon gamers. As the rumor goes, Mew was hiding underneath a truck next to the SS Anne in Vermilion City. To confront and capture it, gamers needed Pokemon with the moves Surf, Cut, and Strength. The claim was that if the player surfed over to the vehicle, cut the tires on it, and then proceeded to move it out of the way using Strength, then the legendary Mew would emerge and challenge them to battle. Of course, none of this worked. But it was confirmed later that there was another way of obtaining Mew for real. Button Combo There are many rumors speculating that if players held down A or B or repeatedly pressed a certain button while throwing a Pokeball, the Pokemon was more likely to be captured. Rumors would fly, and eventually you had your friends telling you to try it. In the end, no matter what buttons you pressed, it really came down to what ball you had, and a good amount of luck. To this day, there are still gamers believing in this hoax, which is why it's become so popular. Obtaining the Triforce in Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 64 In what has to be the biggest wild goose chase in video game history, the search for the Triforce in Ocarina of Time was a long and arduous one, full of clever hoaxes and doctored screenshots. Supporting this was an early trailer that actually showed Link getting the Triforce. That settled it. Of course, Nintendo did remove getting the Triforce cutscene from Ocarina of Time. And, as with most of these hoaxes, the rumor had a way of still getting it. And of course, it was needlessly and hopelessly complex. Those unfortunate enough to fall for some of the more outlandish claims spent hours trying to throw bombs into the center of the lava pit below Ganon's castle and attempting to beat Ganon with zero deaths without the Bigoran sword. We had to accept that the Triforce is simply unacquirable in the Ocarina of Time. Beating the Running Man Rumors and video footage showed that if you were good enough, you could beat the Running Man. It was said that the Running Man gives players an optional quest for a rare item. Many gamers tried for hours to beat him, but they were always disappointed that they were only beaten by just one second. The fact of the matter is, you can't beat him no matter what. Nintendo apparently had no clue what to do if you won, so he always beats you by exactly one second, even if you use a cheat to finish in zero seconds, giving him a time of zero zero. The real point of the race ended up just being to beat your best time. Unfreezing Zora's Domain During the release of Ocarina of Time, gamers tried endlessly to figure out how to unfreeze Zora's Domain after they had obtained the Water Medallion by either using bombs, fire arrows, or Din's fire. Some people to this day still believe it can be unfrozen. One explanation given is that when the player beats a certain temple in the game, the area would return to its original state, aka Death Mountain. Part of the cause for the attempt to unfreeze Zora's domain in Ocarina of Time also stems from an April Fool's prank which Nintendo pulled one year. They released several hoaxed images of Ocarina of Time, which included a shot of the Triforce on the quest status screen filled in, and an adult Link standing in an unfrozen Zora's domain. This caused people to scramble frantically to find ways to unfreeze Zora's domain, until Nintendo revealed that it was all a prank. The Unicorn Fountain it is said that this fountain was supposed to contain the Triforce and was also where Link would learn the sword beam technique. It's possible that it was featured in a beta build of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, but was removed for the release build because of management time constraints. It is believed that the entrance was supposed to be located beneath the waterfall in Zora's domain, before the Great Cataclysm possibly in a cavern located deep beneath the water for a child Link to reach and completely inaccessible for adult Link due to the fact that the water was frozen in adult Link's timeline. Even when hacking the game, a pathway does exist down there, but it just leads to a underwater dead-end wall. 